Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has delayed legal reforms after protests. I'm welcome. There have been more protests in cities in Israel, even though the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has postponed his controversial reforms to the judicial system. In unprecedented events, the country's biggest trade union called a strike and Israelis watched society close down around them on Monday. Our reporter Sofia Batitza has more details. Israel is gripped by one of the worst political crises in its history. This outrage about a reform that would allow ministers to choose Supreme Court judges and would limit the court's powers. And after three months of protests, on Monday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu decided to halt his plan. In a TV address, he accused extremists of trying to divide the nation. Out of national responsibility, I have decided to suspend the second and third readings of the law. There is one thing that I cannot accept. There is an extremist minority that is prepared to tear our country to pieces. It is using violence and incitement. It is talking civil war. The U.S., a key ally of... I don't think he's talking about right wing, though, right? But he's not talking about the right wing minority, right? Because, like, that's a part of his coalition. Where's the Philly accent? I mean, when he's in Israel, he doesn't drop the Philly accent. But when he's talking, listen to him talk to, like, the Sunday shows, bro. And you'll hear it. Of Israel, welcome to move. Compromise is precisely what we have been calling for. And we continue to strongly urge Israeli leaders to find a compromise as soon as possible. But will this be enough? Shortly after the announcement, a planned nationwide strike was called off. The delay will buy time for Mr. Netanyahu, but it's not going to solve the problem. Demonstrators want this bill to be scrapped, not delayed. And that's why last night, tens of thousands of people again took to the streets. It's not a victory at all. Uh, this, this struggle will have to continue. It's few lies, as, as usual. He's just taking a break in order to come back stronger. Police use stun grenades and mortar cannons to disperse protesters in Tel Aviv. But there are people in Israel who support Netanyahu's reform. They were protesting last night, too. It's time for a change. The people elected this government, and we want this government to elect the Supreme Court, and not for the court to elect itself. This is how democracy works. The legislation will now be considered fair. I love, I love this motherfucker being like, this is how democracy works. Bitch. You wouldn't know what democracy is if it slapped you in the fucking face. You don't want democracy. Shut the fuck up. Literally, he's like, come on, bro. We want fucking immediate authoritarian fascism internally in Israel, like the ones that we've dealt out to the fucking Palestinians. Of course, at the behest of some of the most psychotic far-right maniacs, like that fucking weirdo, okay? It's so funny that they're like, come on, bro. This is, this is the democratic way to... Basically fucking develop our fascist state. Like bring bring on the, the final bring on the, the final evolution that we have been trying to fucking uh create here through sequences of terror attacks and, and all this bullshit. That's how it always is. in the next session of parliament at the end of April. And Netanyahu is walking a tightrope. His coalition includes right-wing, nationalist and ultra-orthodox parties. He depends on them to remain in power. And they've insisted that the reform must be passed at all costs. So the government is unlikely reform. to back down. Sofia Bettita, BBC News. 
Mogaizev is a professor at American University and author of works on Israeli policymaking. He told me more about how the situation became so intense so quickly. Netanyahu really underestimated the determination and the resilience shown. Bro, these authoritarian right wing bitches, the hyper, the ultra nationalist right wing fucking far right sickos in Israel. Don't even know that you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to undermine the Supreme Court through 35 years of like deliberately fucking uh, padding the Supreme Court election process by creating like a, like a federalist society type situation, a, a, a scouting and farming program through uh, all of the most conservative institutions of higher learning. That's what you're supposed to do, dog. What do you mean? You can't just like do it like that. But of course, they're so used to authoritarian fascism in Israel when it's done to the Palestinians that they think like, oh, we can do it to the fucking gay Israelis and we can do it to the Israelis that want to like marry a non-Jewish person. You know what I mean? That's at the heart of this conversation. That's why the, the, the concept of like Palestinian emancipation or human rights abuses that Israel engages in towards Palestinians cannot be removed from this combo because those motherfuckers are so entitled. The right-wing sick freaks are so entitled because they always hit the fuck Palestinian button. And before, up until this moment, it has worked. It's worked in undermining civil liberties and actually ruining fucking, uh, you know, uh, living opportunities and job opportunities in Israel because ultimately there's always a bigger enemy. There's always a bigger enemy out there. It's the Palestinians in every shadow. Okay? And now, push has come to shove. And they're fucking uh, speed running and, and doing a, you know, a, a glitch exploit speed run to, towards fascism. And it turns out the Israelis themselves, who have also turned a blind eye or have been totally, uh, totally captivated by the anti-Palestinian propaganda, okay, up until this very moment that made them literally refuse to recognize how fucking psychopathic the far-right Israeli government was and has been, okay, are now going, oh shit, what the fuck? Whoa, 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 what the fuck's going on? Yo, chill. Of course. A country or a, a nation whose citizens routinely turn a blind eye to its human rights abuses will, of course, end up slowly but surely eroding their own civil liberties that they thought that could take for granted. Because the same reactionary forces that constantly dupe people into thinking that Palestinians are the real uh, enemy here, will also inevitably use that opportunity within uh, con their control over the government to eradicate all matter of civil liberties and destroy like one of the safeguarding measures of civil liberties, which is seen as the Supreme Court in, the, uh, in Israel. Okay? What goes around comes around, motherfucker. You want to know why I know that? Because I live in the United States of America where that very same thing is happening at a much slower pace than Israel. And you still got motherfuckers in the chat going, Palestinians are the real enemy. Yeah, totally, dude. Yeah, definitely, bro. You got it. No, go ahead. Every time you think Palestinians are... are uh, at fault, remember that like another fucking, um, another fascist gains his wings. You know what I mean? Every time. Anti-Semite much? Suck my fucking cock, bitch. Okay. Suck my fucking cock. Oh yeah. Anti-Semite much. Remember, I'm anti-Semitic because I recognize the existence and humanity of Palestinians. You are a shame. Okay. There are many Jewish people in here who would be ashamed if I were to monolithize a fucking entire religion of people, okay? You dumb bitch. You are the one who is purposely conflating Judaism, okay, and Jewish existence with both Zionism and also on top of that with devaluing and dehumanizing Palestinians. That's fucking disgusting. Fuck, fuck you. I mean, actually, fuck you. Yeah, it doesn't work here, brother. I mean, like, you know.
I don't think it's going to work here. It doesn't even work that well in like American mainstream media anymore. The whole like, oh man, I saw, I saw a sign that says free parking and I thought it said free Palestine. Oh, the Jews are tired. Like that kind of fucking energy. That kind of energy is like not working when you're fucking murking American uh, citizen journalists. You know what I mean? Uh, when, when, when you're doing like regular raids into, into refugee camps and trying to justify that kind of fucking violence. That is, of course, like the, the, the type of violence that is also seen as like a, an aberration from the routine violence, the routine existence, the routine violence of like, uh, you know, uh, the, the maintenance of Palestinians in territories where they should have autonomy and freedom according to international law. Owned by these demonstrators, hundreds of thousands of them who took to the streets week after week in uh, defense of their democracy. Uh, many of them are concerned that under Netanyahu's watch, Israel has been steadily moving in an increasingly illiberal direction, becoming a sort of Middle Eastern version of Hungary or, uh, or Poland. And his decision to sack his defense minister, uh, a member of his own party who simply demanded a freeze in the legislation for national security reasons, crossed the red line and only served to reinforce the perception that Netanyahu has become this sort of authoritarian leader who's Lol, you corrected me on this back in 2019 and wiped my brain rot from my brain rot conservative father instilled in me over Israel. Mark Pena says, what a lot of people fail to understand is something that I didn't agree with when I started watching you is that there is a separation between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. Growing up, I thought that there was no difference. Yes, it's propaganda. That's it. And it's very successful propaganda. It's ironically anti-Semitic or unironically anti-Semitic to conflate the nation state of Israel and its actions with the, the international Jewish community. Okay. Like when, when the Arab world or some members in the Arab world or some members in the Muslim world do it, you fucking correctly call it as anti-Semitism, but then Ben Shapiro does it. Or Bibi Netanyahu does it, and it's like, no, that's actually valid. What the fuck? You know? It's additionally funny to, to make this argument because the largest supporters, the, the, the biggest Zionists in this country, in the United States of America, are not the American Jews. They're the evangelicals who believe that the chosen sons and daughters uh, of, of God, the Jews, according to their scripture, need to take over that entire land so that Jesus can come back to earth and fight the devil in Megiddo and have a second coming and a rapture. You know, care to... Do you know what happens to the Jews in the rapture that don't convert to evangelical Christianity? They go to hell. <laughs> it's not like a, like a pro... Uh, a, a Jew or pro-Israel take at all. So remember, the largest group of supporters of, of uh, Israel in the United States of America are not even the American Jews. They are American Christians that have like the, you know, my second amendment is there to protect the first uh, type uh, bumper sticker motherfuckers with like a like a fat Israeli flag right next to it. And you're like, why is, is this lifted F uh, 350 pickup truck have a star of David in the back? Like this dude that came out of it are, is saying like really unhinged and anti-Semitic conspiracies simultaneously. They're literally like, yeah, George Soros, that Jew, he worked with the Nazis. He's responsible for America turning into a morally degenerate culture. And then they simultaneously are like, we must defend Israel at all costs from the Palestinian scourge. How? Well, I'll tell you how. Conditional uh, allegiances. <laughs> this is exactly what we're taught in Sunday school. Even as a reformed Jew in New York, it took a lot for me to understand that all the education that was instilled in me for years of propaganda in order not to be able to separate the idea of being Jewish and being pro-Israel Zionism. Yeah. Is putting 
his political and his personal interests ahead of national security interests. And this was a decision that sparked. Oh, by the way, here, here's another fucking example. Ben Gvir right now, that psychotic freak terrorist fuck. Okay. Like the, the Kahanist pig, Ben Gvir, who himself in like the 60s would have been victim to uh, anti, what is he? He's, he's a fuck. I'm going to fuck up his uh, ethnic uh, uh, background uh, again. Who himself would have been victim of like uh, racism uh, as, a, as a Mizrahi Jew, okay? Who, of course, is like uh, a Candace Owens type, but for uh, Mizrahi uh, uh, Jews, okay? Well, which that distinction no longer exists really uh, because, you know, it's more so uh, acceptable that like Mizrahi Jews are also... Uh, you know, uh, they they've been made a part of the 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 overarching white concept, like you see in America. Okay. Anyway, um, that type of racism is long gone now. That's why all the fucking uh Middle Eastern Jews that normally would have been fucking uh shit on at a different point in time can do the mo become the most insane unhinged nationalists that you know have a party called the Jewish Power Party. Anyway, um, regardless, that sick fucking pervert now has his own uh, Gestapo. Literally. And they call it the National Guard. Like, they're not even... They're not even fucking hiding it. The party is called Jewish Power Party. And the fucking secret police that Bibi Netanyahu gave him, this Kahanist terrorist, is called the National Guard. Like, isn't it called the National Guard? And he gave it to them. He gave it to Ben Gvir so he would shut the fuck up because he had to extend. He had to extend the, the uh, timeline of when he will undermine the Israeli Supreme Court by a month. Why is it that a Kahanist pig dog piece of shit, a terrorist, not by my standards, but by the Israeli government standards, so you understand how fucking extremist he is, okay? And I don't mean he was a terrorist because he's Palestinian and he threw a rock as a 14-year-old. I mean, like, he is too far to the right with, like, violent extermination of Palestinians for the Israeli government. That's why they called him a terrorist. He was not allowed to serve in the IDF. That fucking guy now has his own secret police. Israeli minister uh, Ben Gavir post video with bread after banning Palestinian prisoners from making it. Calling the uh, calling the uh, camps that Palestinians are put into summer camps is choice words, you know. Just like calling your pa the party the Jewish Power Party is choice. Is choice, you know. Just like the same choice exists for you know the Praetorian Guard. Like having the, the far-right terrorist, the far-right fascist terrorist have its own secret police force and calling it the National Guard. You know, just think about that. Just not saying anything. I'm just saying that it's just very close to, to other things that have happened in history. You know, very similarly, as a matter of fact. Of a bit of an old school take there. Yes, Holocaust denialists refer to Auschwitz as just summer camp because it had a pool. That's what I was referencing. For those of you who didn't understand the point, calling concentration camps summer camp was, is one of the most common fucking uh, Nazi tactics. It was also utilized famously by Laura Ingram when talking about our immigration detention facilities in the United States of America, uh, 
But they literally did that. They actually would open certain concentration camps to the public. Well, not to the public, but to the media to show how wonderful it was. Uh, and and uh, the media would cover it as though it was like a wonderful, fun time, a summer camp for the Jews. Oh my God, Joe Rogan getting mad at... Because you're not going to achieve effort equality. People, there's, there's certain people who are just going to always work harder than other people. This idea of like, we need to redistribute... I was watching this maddening conversation where this fucking dork was trying to say that all money over $3 million that a person makes should be taxed at 90%. Like, that's great for you to say, because you're never going to make $3 million, you fucking idiot. But that's so stupid. The idea behind it is so stupid. The, the understanding of where that money goes is so stupid. Because you're not going to... It's so ironic. You're shitting on Sam Cedar. Who had a great... Quote unquote debate, I guess, with some fucking libertarian weirdo. He watched the video and got mad. I saw that part. I don't think I'm a fucking dork and a moron. It's so funny because you also literally admitted you don't understand how like tax brackets work. Like you can't call the other guy a moron while simultaneously demonstrating your lack of understanding of how tax brackets work. Like, that's not how that works. It just means 90% taxed after 3 million. That doesn't mean like 90% of all the money you make. You can still make more than 3 million. You can still, your end of the year return will still be fucking higher than 3 million. It doesn't work that way. Also, we had that. We had that. Sam literally explained that like eight times on the video. Yeah, I know. I think Sam did explain that. I kind of want to watch that video. It's pretty funny. No, Joe Rogan and everyone else basically thinks. What? Not that, not that I disagree with you, but as someone who understands Hebrew, he was saying the prisons are like camps where there are convicted criminals, not the refugee camps. Brother, I understood that. He's saying the prisons are like camps. The convicted pr criminal. First of all, in order for a Palestinian to be considered a convicted criminal, under like uh, not even like Israeli liberal courts, but instead under the military courts, you don't need to do much. You just need to be Palestinian. That's it. So the idea that like that those are actually like convicted criminals is fucking insane. And also, he's basically saying like the the conditions in such uh, a situation is is uh, uh, similar to uh, summer camp, undermining the conditions in those prisons, while he is simultaneously trying to fucking make those conditions worse. I've been. Hold on. Let's watch the rest uh, of this, though. Spontaneous, massive protests that very night. As many as 100,000 people left their home. It's true because some people will turn down. Dude, I love, this is my favorite idiotic take. Where is it? It's true because some people will turn down a higher raise because they don't want to be in a higher tax bracket. It's such a funny fucking take. Because once again, you're just describing that, like, they don't understand how that works. Okay. Like, they don't understand how that works, so they are stupid. Like, that's not how taxes work. Does that make sense? Like, you're, again, yeah, it's, just, it's not the fault of the government. It's the fault of the fucking idiot for thinking that that's how it works. 